There we go. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today. You are here to learn more about Enterprises King County Pasta Grant RFP opportunity. Uh, my name is Juanita Salinas Aguila. I'm the program director here at Enterprise Community Partners leading the Washington Early Learning Loan Fund. Uh, with me today is uh, Alyssa Torres, our new staff uh, program officer who will be introduced shortly into the uh, presentation, as well as our consultant, Patty Julio and Taylor Robinson, who is supporting us in tech. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to spend some time together today. Um, I will be reviewing our grant goals. Um, and throughout the presentation, we will be providing info on requirements, uh, eligibility requirements, priority projects. We will be reviewing items that this funding source does not fund. Uh, we'll also have some time to review some frequently asked questions that come directly from the application itself, as well as project budget requirements, due dates, timelines, scoring criteria, and we'll end with some overall PASTA program updates, as well as some time for actual Q&A. So if you do have some specific questions, uh, you can either drop them into the chat now. Uh, we'll be tracking those as best we can as we move through the presentation, but we will have some designated time at the end for you to ask specific questions that we can address live. Um, this uh, uh, webinar is being recorded. So if there are members in the community um, who would like to review this at a later time, we'll be able to do so, or you can also access the link to uh, review once more at your leisure. And I do wanna note that we will be providing the actual RFP during our time together today. The RFP does include an actual link to the slide room platform, which is where applications can be submitted to this grant opportunity. Okay. All right, so before we jump into this RFP and funding goals and priority populations, I do wanna make a quick mention that we are <clears throat> following the guidance and requirements of King County's implementation plan for investment in PASTA funds. This uh, document um, is created to uh, diligently describe the source of these funds, but also um, highlight the funding priori priorities and goals. Uh, the plan itself was put together by members of the early learning community, advocates, experts, and early learning providers who came together over the course of a year to put this implementation plan together uh, for the county. And so we are going to be leaning on that document uh, if you are interested in checking that out, we're going to be dropping that into the chat right now. Um, it is a lengthy document that covers all the funding priorities, um, but there is specific sections that are specific to the early learning portion of these funding sources. All right, so to begin with our grant goals, the primary goal is to improve the actual, the, the educational outcomes for students in vulnerable and underserved populations within King County. That being said, priorities for this RFP will be given to projects that serve children and youth of color, children and youth from families at or below the 200% federal poverty level, children and youth who are experiencing homelessness in the foster care system, in the welfare system or at risk of being involved or involved with the juvenile justice system. We'll be prioritizing pro programs that serve children and youth with disabilities, children and youth who identify as LGBTQIA. And we will also be taking close consideration to regions within King County that have limited access to quality childcare. Funded projects for this RFP will be required to submit certain reporting requirements during the course of the contracting period and upon completion of the grant period of performance. Um, so this 
includes but is not limited to tracking the childcare slots and classrooms that are created as a result of this funding source, uh, your organizational stability and next steps, overall community impacts. We do love to see pictures and hope to also do some site visits during this grant round and opportunity now that um, in-person uh, visits are a little easier to conduct. Um, so we do hope to do that during the course of this grant period and other plans or documentation noting completion of a project. So what kind of projects um, are, does, do these funds <clears throat> eligible for? Right now, we have approximately $1.2 million to spend in this RFP. We are willing to spend up to $1.5 million for high needs projects and shovel ready projects. During this grant round, we hope to grant up to five awards. Funding is available to support either the construction of new childcare facilities or the expansion of existing childcare facilities. Applicants may also apply for pre-development funding, renovation funds of existing facilities or constructions and funding new facilities. And as mentioned, because these are King County funds, all proposed projects must be located within King County. Okay, uh, we're going to spend a few minutes reviewing the eligibility requirements for this funding source. There are a number of types of organizations that are eligible to provide to apply for these are for this RFP that includes child care centers. Um, <clears throat> nonprofit property management organizations affordable housing developers that are partnering with early learning providers recognized tribes, community and technical colleges, religious entities. We are requiring that projects who do apply are licensed and in good standing or intend to become licensed with DCYF. And we do require that child care centers must be or intend to become active participants in good standing with early achievers quality rating program or currently are have a comparable accreditation program that signals compliance with quality, high quality standards. We also look to ensure that the program applying for these funds have a Washington State business license to provide early learning services. So to review the prioritized projects for this funding source, when we review these projects, we will be looking for projects that serve those prioritized populations. I did review those um, a few slides ago. Those are also uh, listed in the King County implementation plan that I mentioned as well. We will be giving priority or reviewing those co-located projects that include affordable housing or community development projects with multi or multi-use facility that serves low-income households. Um, these co-located projects do include those affordable housing and early learning or other services that support children and families. We will be looking at programs that do demonstrate offering services with a trauma-informed lens that fosters resiliency programs that provide culturally competent care, and programs that bring the whole child lens to their program, meaning looking at projects that uh, provide wraparound services to children and beyond to their parents, households, or guardians. Um, so we will be looking at what other services um, are offered to children and, fam and their families within programs. We will be prioritizing projects that follow ADA regulations and universal design principles, those that demonstrate financial and operational capacity and feasibility, 
and we are requiring projects and prioritizing projects that serve low income children and families by accepting forms of subsidies such as the Working Connections Child Care, ECAP, Head Start, Early Head Start, or other local city, county, or tribal child care subsidies. Projects in areas with limited access to quality child care and programs and services as well. I am going to quickly review what elements this grant does not fund. This is an initial list, but if there are specific questions, please, that you may have, please put those in the chat. These funds do not fund program equipment, child care equipment, such as activities, games, curriculums, food or snacks. These dollars are not emergency funding and are not able to support salaries, utility bills, mortgage bills, and things like that. All right, so we'll take a few minutes to review the frequently asked questions. We did take these FAQs directly from the application questions themselves. So as I move through these questions, I'll let you know which questions we are referring to in these. Uh, the first question I'd like to review for folks is, what is considered a pre-development activity? Um, projects can apply specifically for pre-development dollars and pre-development pre dollars can be considered um, items or things that need to be paid for um, prior to the actual start of construction. So that it can include, but not limited to development concepts, design expenses, contractor cost estimates, permitting expenses, or other due diligence items that you may need paid for, such as zoning, environmental studies, or geotechnical studies. Um, again, if you have questions about very specific pre-development activities, um, we are happy to uh, let you know if those are considered pre-development activities or not. There is a question on our application that indicates uh, if you are applying for pre-development activities or not. All right. So these next questions are our narrative questions, number one through four in our RFP. They fall under the organizational description and community impact. These will be our key questions that um, is dedicated for you as an applicant to identify how you fit into the prioritized populations that these funds are intended to support. It will ask you to share your program mission statement, uh, the communities you provide, you currently provide care for or intend to provide care for once the project is completed, and how you will provide those culturally responsive care and curriculum to children that reflect their families and household. So these, as well as one more, note here is question number four does ask you to identify partnerships um, externally or internally that you will include in your program that enhance your overall services. So questions one through four is really the who, the what, and the how. We will be looking very closely at these questions to really identify how you fit into those prioritized populations. So uh, please make sure that you are being as detailed as possible in these questions um, and uh, anything that you think would be critical for, to us knowing on how you intend to provide care to children in your community, we would love to review that in your application. Um, all right. The next question in our narrative section is about our scope of work. Um, it falls under the project description section. And the scope of work is really one of the most critical questions in our application. 
A scope of work is a thorough description of your intended project. Uh, that is a description of your pre-development activities you're, at, you're requesting funding for, the renovation activities you're requesting funding for, or the construction project itself. Um, please be as detailed as possible in this scope of work. This question really allows us uh, a snapshot to understanding truly what your project is and what these funds will cover. Include as much details, needs, and timelines if those are applicable. One key thing that I always let folks know who are applying for these funds, uh, do not assume that anyone reading your application knows anything about you, your area, or your projects, your proposed project. Uh, please be as thorough as possible here and um, as detailed as possible with your timelines and the source, the uses of these funds. All right. The next FAQ we have to review here is what is the maximum amount uh, I can apply for. So as mentioned, we uh, do have up to 1.5 million to allocate in this RFP round. Um, we recognize though that with the high cost of construction that nearly everyone is facing these days, um, that amount may not be sufficient to cover even one project in our region. That being said, um, please apply for what you intend to need in your project. Um, we are recognizing that our ultimate awards may not cover your full need for these projects, but we still would love for you to indicate your total project costs. Uh, the reason for that is it's important for facilities funders in our region to understand the true costs of projects that um, programs are facing these days. Um, it informs us when we make critical decisions on how much funding we can allocate in future rounds um, and what gaps, uh, financial gaps programs are facing. So please indicate what your overall project costs are. Um, if you have more specific questions on the project costs, we can um, answer your questions today or you can reach out to me um, individually to um, if you'd like to be more thorough about that question. How long do you have to spend down these grant funds? The grantees that are identified and awarded, uh, we will have a spend down timeline of one year from January 1st through December 31st, 2023. Um, I should back up and say from the start of contracting through December 31st, 2023. However, the contracting period itself will be negotiable depending on the actual project uh, that you are attempting to complete. We recognize that there are several delays. Um, many construction projects are currently facing due to COVID, uh, shipping delays, um, and other permitting delays that folks are facing. So that is negotiable. Are you required to work with the Washington Early Learning Loan Fund? The PASTA funds is a funding source that comes out of the WELL Fund as a whole. Um, we are not requiring you to also uh, be a lending uh, recipient from the WELL Fund. However, um, you are more than welcome to have conversations with our lenders through the WELL Fund if your project is needing additional financing to complete your project needs. Uh, what do I need to report if I am awarded this grant? So we will have two sets of reporting, two grantees that are chosen. We'll have some reporting um, check-ins during the duration of the project contracting period and after the project completion. We will be we're looking to see how these funds are ultimately spent down, a description of those outcomes, and of course, photos of project. And this isn't listed here, but we uh, are intending to do some site visits um, in 2023 with these projects. 
The application does include budget and attachments that are required alongside the actual narrative questions. So what are those required attachments? We are requiring you to attach a project budget. Um, we are asking you as well to include pictures of your project or intended project. Uh, that could be actual pictures of the space that you're intending to renovate, the land that you're intending to, to do ground up construction on. Um, if it's a pre-development ask, you can include drawings or renderings, uh, but we would like to, it, it could be a great many things, but we really would love to see um, a visual of your intended project. So if you have questions on whether or not a specific visual would be helpful, you can always reach out to us as well. There is an other option in the slide room link that allows you to attach an additional document titled other. Uh, this is an optional attachment. If you have additional documents that you believe will be helpful for us to better understand your projects, you can um, upload an additional document there. The project budget must include the uses of these enterprise POSTA grant funds. We want you to be as detailed as possible in the, the uses of these funds, um, that is categorizing um, the, the actual breakdown of costs um, and what you are asking for. We are also looking to see what other funding sources are committed to this project, um, whether they are other grants that you have applied for and received or other grants that you have applied for and have not um, received yet. And your budget must include a total budget cost. If you do not have your own project budget, we are going to offer a project budget template that can be used. Um, it's not required to use this internal budget template that we can provide, but if you would like to use it, you are more than welcome to do so. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a quick review of what that template look like, looks like so you can get a better idea of the kinds of elements your project budget should include. Alyssa, do you mind dropping the project budget template into the chat now so that folks can click on that and download that right now if you're um, able to? Thank you. So this is a snapshot of what our project template is. Um, you'll see that, of course, at the top, we have you write down your provider name, your applicant name, and your project. Um, on the left column, we'd like you to list the item description, so all of the items that the funding will be paying for. All of those items listed there are examples, so if they do not apply to your project, you can just delete them and um, move forward. You can add on other item descriptions in there as well. Those are simply examples, if applicable. Um, we'll ask you to submit a second column there as estimated cost and the POSTA funding request for these funds. There is a section in the budget template that asks you to explain how those numbers in, the, in these sections are generated, as well as an explanation of the proposed expenses on each budget line. The template also includes a sheet that identifies the sources of funds. So we would like you to list all of the funding sources that have gone into your project thus far or other grants or funding opportunities that you expect to receive um, in the near future. So you can identify the status of those applications by indicating to us whether those funds are committed uh, or pending or will be applied for. So there's three options that you can note under status of other funding sources. Okay. Um, I just wanna check that the budget template was dropped. 
Juanita, it's not letting us add files okay. right now to okay. the chat. So what I can do is add the link to the slide room application. And so people can look at look through that and then we okay. can follow up um, and share those PDFs and those files with um, everyone in attendance. Great. Thank you, Alyssa. I think that the webinar um, has some restrictions on the actual document sharing. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so moving forward, we're gonna cover the due date um, <clears throat> and timeline for our decision-making with this RFP. Completed applications are due no later than November 30th at 11.59 p.m. in the slide room application web link. Um, Alyssa did just drop the link into the chat as she mentioned, so you can take a look at that and have that at your disposal. Um, a team of five reviewers will review and score all of the applications. Uh, those reviewers on that panel will include members of enterprise staff and King County POSTA staff, as well as an outside consultant. Recommendations for these grant will be made no later than December 31st, 2022. Um, depending on the amount of applications we review, um, it could be sooner than that, um, knowing that we are in the midst of a holiday season. My personal hope is that we can let folks know before um, Christmas. So stay tuned. Um, if, if you have not heard from us um, by December 31st, please reach out to us. Um, but we do anticipate letting folks know by the end of the year. Contracting with grantees will begin in January of 2023. Uh, we'll start reaching out to you and working with you individually to get you under contract with enterprise community partners. We will not be reviewing any application prior to the November 30th due date. And this is not a first come first serve process, meaning um, we will not review um, the first ones that submit, we will wait till November 30th and all of those that are completed and submitted will be reviewed as such. Our scoring criteria does reflect the prioritized population and eligibility standards that comes with this funding source. So the five member review team will score each application in a spreadsheet that lists the following criteria a review of the narrative sections around scope of work and the organization's demonstrated ability to provide culturally responsive and trauma-informed services. Those are those questions one through five in the narrative sections. We will be scoring based on project readiness and feasibility. We will be reviewing those project budgets and sources of funds. The targeted communities and populations served, in essence, the priority projects that we covered in slide 11. And of course, um, we will also be reviewing um, prioritized locations as far as looking at geographic uh, spread and recognizing projects that sir, are, will be located in areas with the least access to quality child care. All right, <clears throat> so we've gone through uh, the key specifics in our RFP. I do want to take just a couple of moments to share a little bit of our PASTA overall program updates. The King County PASTA dollars do emphasize uh, capacity building in our communities and advancing access to and building um, capacity for emerging providers, providers of color, um, and um, other populations to be able to grow their child care programs to provide more care for King County children and families. So I do want to share an update um, overall on our programmatic efforts that we are engaged in. Um, a couple key things that I'm very excited to announce is the expansion of our enterprise early learning team here. Um, 
<clears throat> Alyssa Torres has just recently joined us last week uh, to help um, with obviously right now with this RFP process, but we'll be leading um, some programmatic efforts for this funding source within the community. Alyssa, do you wanna just jump on and quickly introduce yourself? Sure, uh, thank you for that introduction, Juanita. My name is Alyssa Torres. Um, I am on my second week here at Enterprise and I come from uh, a little bit of a early learning background with KBTC Public Television, as well as an affordable housing background with um, most recently with the Tacoma Housing Authority. So I'm very excited to put those uh, two experiences into use here with the early learning team and excited to um, read all of your amazing proposals and work with you through this RFP. Thanks, Alyssa. We've also brought on an external consultant, Patricia Julio from Julio Consulting, who brings expertise um, to this RFP process and will be providing an expert lens to ensure that we are reviewing these application through a lens of racial equity um, and um, ensuring that we are adhering to our PASTA uh, standards and funding priorities. Uh, Patricia, do you want to share or quickly introduce yourself? Thank you, Juanita. Hi, everyone. My name is Patricia Julio. This is actually my third year working with Enterprise supporting uh, their grants for early learning and I'm excited to be here again. Thank you. Thanks, Patty. <clears throat> we have been diligently also expanding our well fund pipeline for uh, King County pasta eligible projects. Um, that are in need of financing and technical assistance. Uh, the Washington Early Learning Loan Fund does include um, obviously the um, ability and opportunity to access financing needs for projects throughout the state. But with our King County dollars, we are putting intentional time and energy into uh, targeting uh, King County projects that are eligible or in need of financing through our well fund. And as well as those projects that are in need of technical assistance or other supports or connections to resources uh, for eligible projects. Um, that includes projects in King County that do receive POSTA grant funds, but also those who um, aren't are not grantees, right? So we will also be doing some capacity building, providing technical assistance um, to King County projects um, that are in need of guidance and support as they move through the developmental process. We're also very excited to continue our efforts around building our emerging provider cohort. Um, this is a process to identify um, a minimum of three emerging providers who are interested in expansion of their child care facilities. So we intend to um, identify existing family child care providers who do not own or operate child care centers, but who have a strong desire or, and or wish um, or is already on the journey of uh, opening up their own child care center and making that leap. Um, these will be uh, programs that meet programmatic priorities and services to children and families. And we are doing these efforts to ensure that all providers are able to achieve uh, racial equity outcomes and um, opportunities to expand their businesses. This cohort will receive one-on-one -on -one TA um, in the form of project development, real estate development, financial development support, and intentional supports to allow them to become grant ready when eligible. This work is now in process um, through the end of the fourth quarter uh, 2022. So presently through the first quarter of 2023. So um, stay tuned and we will be providing overall community engagement efforts to um, grow this emerging cohort um, opportunity. All right, so Q&A time. Um, I 
and pausing there with our actual content with, of our presentation. And we'll open it up now for Q&A um, if folks have specific questions around the application or the RFP. Um, please feel free to drop those questions in the Q&A chat that you should see in your slide room. <clears throat> I'm sorry, in your Zoom. And I'm going to open this up and start reading these. Okay, so the first question is, states, if you're a nonprofit organization that will be uh, locating a project in an affordable housing community, but not a property management organization, do you need to apply through the affordable housing organization to be eligible, or can you be a community-based organization and apply on your own? Uh, if you are a nonprofit organization, you are eligible to apply for these grant funds. Um, if you are a nonprofit organization, um, that is intending to build a new early learning center, or if you're partnering with an early learning center, uh, please do indicate that in the application. There are questions in there that ask you, are you an organization that is um, partnering with an early learning provider? Please list that early learning provider. So you don't have to be an actual affordable housing, but you can be a nonprofit org um, that is engaging in the early learning construction, right? I hope that answers. Um, the next question is a good question around, is the total per grantee 1.2 to 1.5 or, okay, this is a great question, um, clarification question. So we have a total of 1.2, to $1.5 million to spend to allocate in this RFP in total. That means that within that total amount, we intend to uh, provide up to five awards. So average, depending on the type of projects, we're looking at an average of perhaps 300,000 to 400,000-ish. We are not actually naming a, a true average because it could depend on the actual projects and their asks. Um, some projects may ask for um, a smaller amount, some may ask for a larger amount, but we do hope to award up to five different grants with a total of 1.2 to 1.5. I hope that answers that question. Um, next question, uh, uh, if the project receives funds in this POSTA round, will it be eligible in future rounds? For example, using POSTA to pay an architect now and applying again for money to pay construction. Yes, that will be eligible for projects. Um, it's very likely that in the future years, we'll see projects come back for funding um, to continue their specific project needs. Um, the only restriction there is that you cannot um, apply for the exact portion, the same portion of your project. It has to be uh, the second phase. So as indicated in this question from Jamie, uh, perfect question, you could ask, uh, do a request to help pay for some pre-development activities such as an architect right now, and then next year could come back and ask for funding to help pay for some of those construction costs. Um, Philippa, uh, we will be providing the um, RFP application um, to all of those attending today after this information session is completed. All right. I want to make sure I'm not missing any questions, so bear with me. Um, the next question here that I have is a question that asks about play and learn groups. Um, if the project will create spaces for play and learn groups and not specifically childcare, should we use the number 
plain learn spot slots that will create yes. Uh, please indicate how many play and learn slots your project will create if your project offers play and learn groups. Um, the second part of this question asks um, whether it's helpful for the applicant to point to whether or not other play and learn groups are available in that region. Yes, um, that is helpful information for us to know. Um, play and learn groups are um, a different support system that comes with different supports for children and families. Um, and it would be great to understand um, your overall impact in your um, community or region. I hope I understood your question correctly. Okay. Um, Patty or Alyssa, <clears throat> do we one, have- wait, one, yes. Juanita, really quick. There was a question I received email okay. that I chatted you. If you uh, wouldn't mind attempting to answer that one for us, please. Okay. You brought it into the chat. Okay. I, yeah, um, I Thank you. Yes. Uh, so the question is, are projects already under construction eligible to apply? Yes. Um, projects um, that are eligible, eligible to apply, you can apply to any developmental process that you are in, whether it's pre-development, about to start construction, or in the middle of construction. Um, I would add on to that and say, with any project, um, please ensure that you are as detailed as possible in the scope of work. So if you are halfway through construction, um, you can indicate where you are at in the construction process and what these funds will help pay for to complete the construction project if the funds are set to complete your project. Um, I, there was a note here that says uh, something came up and I had to miss the early part of this presentation. This presentation is recorded and the recording will be provided to those attendees and registered um, later on this afternoon. I have another question um, uh, about construction for outdoor playground areas. Um, this, this funding source can help with the construction of the outdoor playground areas, but cannot help pay for the equipment itself. I hope that helps answer that question. Um, another good question that came up, um, is there state prevailing wage requirements if construction is being paid for with POSTA funds? Yes, there are. there is state prevailing wage requirements um, that grantees must adhere to with these POSTA funds. There are um, terms and conditions attached to the actual RFP uh, that dive into in detail about those terms. So please take your time to read that as well. Uh, another key question here is, will these funds be available for construction or will they be reimbursable type of funds? Uh, so Enterprise does have the ability to identify for our grantees um, whether grant, let me, let me back up. Grantees who come under contract with Enterprise have the ability to choose uh, to have their, their funds be on a reimbursement-based process or an invoice-based process. Reimbursement-based process is um, sometimes your more typical process in which a grantee will pay for um, a project cost and request reimbursement from their uh, contract, their grant funds. Um, we are able to do grants that follow that process. We can also provide grants that follow an invoice-based process, meaning um, an organization can submit invoices that they need to pay, and we can disperse funds to help pay for that invoice or bill, and the grantee will be required to follow up by providing proof of payment. So those are two different ways in which we can bring grantees under contract. I hope that answers that question. 
Um, I'm wondering if there was any questions I missed in the chat in general. No, looks like you got them all, at least for now. Okay. So we will make sure for those who are attending here today um, to email the actual RFP document and the budget template to all of those attendees. Um, we had some technical difficulties in not sharing an actual document file, right? So uh, Taylor, uh, we will have a listing of attendees to this webinar with their email address and ensure that everyone will have an email sent to them. Okay. Juanita, maybe uh, next slide for your, you and Alyssa, your contact emails. Thank you. Oh, and you can see that I was looking at the Q&A on my shared screen. All right, so I'm gonna leave this up for a few more minutes. Um, this is uh, our contact information. Thank you so much for spending time with us today um, in review of this PASTA um, RFP opportunity. Um, my name is Juanita Salinas. My email is on this PowerPoint as well as Alyssa Torres's email is on this PowerPoint please feel free to email either one of us um, over the next few days as questions emerge. Um, and I'll keep that up for a few more minutes and wait to see if there's any lingering questions. Um, so it looks like we ended a little early, but we'll, we'll stay on for a few more minutes. Thank you, everyone. Um, actually, uh, Alyssa, we can also, can we also just copy and paste our email into the chat as well? I'll go ahead and put that in there just in case. Okay, well, thank you everyone who attended. Um, have a beautiful rest of the afternoon and I look forward to reading all the wonderful applications that, I, that we'll be seeing. Thank you everyone.